Today I'll show you how to knit a baby blanket, specifically the baby bobble blanket. This is an adorable blanket studded with big baubles that make up a cute and quirky pattern. In this video, I'll show you how to knit the blanket from cast on to cast off. We'll cover how to make that garter stitch border, how to make a bobble and customize the bobble size, and how to block the blanket for a perfect finish. This video includes timestamps in the description so you can easily navigate the video. So grab the free pattern in the link in the description and follow along. If you'd like to support this channel, then please consider buying a beautiful PDF file of the pattern. It's totally optional, but I always appreciate your support. For the price of a coffee in a high cost of living city, it helps to keep this channel running. Who should knit this blanket? This is a beginner-friendly pattern. I'd rate it a five out of 10 in terms of difficulty. To knit this pattern, you should be comfortable casting on, knitting, purling, and casting off. This blanket is knit on a long pair of circular needles, but it's knit flat. So instead of joining in the round, we just turn our needle over at the end of the row and continue knitting. We're using circular needles to accommodate for the long length of the blanket. Straight needles just wouldn't be able to hold all the stitches on the blanket. We'll start by knitting 16 rows of garter stitch, then we'll keep the garter stitch border on either side of the blanket, then we'll work bobble row one, and then nine rows of stockinette stitch. Then we'll knit bobble row two, where the bobbles are placed in between the bobbles of the first row, then another nine rows of stockinette stitch. These make up the bobble pattern, and we'll repeat the pattern a total of nine times, and then seal off the blanket with another 16 rows of garter stitch, then ta-da, our baby bobble blanket is complete. You can knit the standard baby size or even like a full-on adult size. Just adjust the number of cast-on stitches to make the blanket wider. You can always knit more repeats to make the blanket longer. To adjust the width, cast on a multiple of six plus one. This means you'll cast on a multiple of six and add one stitch. So for example, 60 is a multiple of six, then add one, which equals 61 stitches. More likely you'll cast on say like 157 or 169 stitches for a larger size. 156 is a multiple of six plus one is 157. 168 is a multiple of six plus one is 169. So that's how the math works out. For this blanket, I used eight balls of Debbie Bliss Cashmerino Erin in the color Baby Pink, 40 inch five millimeter circular needle, two stitch markers, one tapestry needle, pair of scissors, a bucket for blocking, which is optional, and towels for blocking, also optional. Now a note about the yarn. I made a rookie mistake by choosing a yarn that's not superwash. Superwash yarns are typically wool and they've been treated so they can be machine washed without felting. Machine washable yarns are really crucial when knitting baby items because, I mean, if you've ever met a baby, <laughs> you'll know that they are kind of messy. So it makes life a lot easier when you knit baby items with fibers, which tolerate machine washing really well. So the Debbie Bliss Cash Merino is gorgeous, but I didn't think about how practical it would be for a baby item, but it's already been knitted and gifted. So it's a bit too late for me. So just make sure you don't make my mistake. Choose a super wash wool, acrylic cotton, or even bamboo because these wash well in the machine. I'm going to start by casting on 133 stitches and I'm using the long tail cast on. Now if you want to use the long tail cast on that's cool it just means that you need to accurately estimate the long tail yarn for the cast on and this can be a little bit tricky. I measured out about a length of 62 inches of long tail to cast on 133 stitches. I'll just give you that little cheat that I used. If you're knitting a larger size, then you'll kind of have to figure it out yourself. You can also use the cable cast on if you don't want to deal with this kind of estimating shenanigans. All right, now I've casted on 133 stitches on my needle. Just look at how long the stitches go on for. And I've got this tiny little tail, which is perfect, just the right amount of length to weave into my blanket when I'm done. This is just like a knitter's dream, just the, the perfect end length of a long tail. Anyway. Now we are going to work the garter stitch border, and this is going to make up the border at the bottom of the blanket. Row one is very simple. We're just going to slip one knitwise. I'm going to take my needle, slip it into the first stitch as if I were going to knit, but instead of knitting it, I'm just going to slip it right off the needle. That is a slip one knitwise. So I'll do that again. I'm gonna take my right needle and go into this first stitch as if I were going to knit into it. 
and then just drop it right off. Next, we're just going to knit. So this is garter stitch, which means knitting every stitch and knitting every row, easy peasy. So we are going to knit all the way across the entire row until we get to the last stitch, at which point we're gonna purl this guy. So strap on to the knit train, knit, 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 knit. And here's my last stitch and I'm going to bring my yarn up front and purl this guy. There we go, yeah, all right. Now the reason why we purl the last stitch and slip the first stitch is so that we can get that beautiful knit edge on our garter stitch. So what we're gonna do now is repeat the last row 16 times in total, okay? So we're gonna do this 15 more times for a total of 16 rows of garter stitch. So we're going to, once again, slip the first stitch as if we're going to knit and then drop it off the needle. That creates that beautiful selvage edge. And now we're going to just knit. Knit, 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 all the way to the end of our, wow, 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 to the end of our row, at which point we will purl that last stitch. All right, so we're going to knit 16 rows of garter stitch, slipping the first stitch knitwise, purling the last stitch. So let's go guys, let's do this. So the cool thing about garter stitch is you can count your rows by the ridges. So I need 16 rows, and when I have 16 rows, I'm gonna have eight garter ridges. So I can count it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Can turn it around to the other side and also count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight garter stitch ridges, so I know that I have 16 rows. The reason why is between these garter stitch ridges is a knit row. So we've got one ridge, one row, one purl row, one knit row, one purl row, one knit row. And I can just shorthand that by counting up the purl rows, knowing that between each purl row is a knit row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight purl rows. That means I have eight rows of knits in between, and that is a total of 16 rows. And we are ready to work the setup row. We are going to slip one knit wise, and now we're going to knit seven stitches. So here we go. One, two, six, and seven. So including the stitch that we've slipped, we have eight stitches. Two, four, six, eight. Now we're going to do what's called a PM, which stands for place marker. So I've got this homemade stitch marker here. I just made it with some contrasting yarn and I'm gonna slip it onto the needle. Okay, PM stands for place marker onto the needle. All right, now we're going to knit to the last eight stitches on the row. So we're back on the garter stitch train, just knitting, 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 Knit, 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 do, 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 all the way to the last eight stitches. Get on the knit train and continue knitting. Now I've knit to the last eight stitches. I'm gonna take out my other stitch marker and I'm gonna put it onto the needle. That's our PM. And then we will knit to the last stitch, purl it. Cool. So that is our setup row. So now you can kind of see our blanket taking shape, right? So these stitch markers mark the border of the blanket. So we're gonna keep the border in garter stitch all the way up towards the top of the blanket, whereas the middle portion here, this part here, is going to be knit in stockinette stitch with our bobble pattern. Now let's work some stockinette stitch. We are going to slip one knit wise as we have been doing. And then we're going to knit in garter stitch all the way to the marker. And now that I've reached the marker, I'm going to SM, which means slip the marker, slip marker from left needle to the right needle. And now we're going to purl. So I'm gonna bring my yarn up front and I'm going to purl to the last marker. So purl, 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 all the way to the last marker, okay? So here we are, purl. And after I do my first purl, I like to bring the yarn to the back and just do a little tug to make sure that area between the marker is nice and tight. And then I'll bring my yarn to the front again and work the purl stitch. 
and now I've reached my stitch marker, so I'm going to slip it over, and now we are going to knit to the last stitch, last stitch, and it gets a little pearl. Cool. So that is row one of the stockinette stitch. Now we're on to row two, which is the right side of our work. So we're gonna start off by slipping that first stitch knit-wise, and then we are going to knit to the marker. And then we're going to SM, slip that marker over, and then we're going to knit to the last marker, at which point we are going to slip it, knit to the last stitch, and purl that little buddy. These are our stockinette rows. Purling the back and knitting the front. And we're nearing the last stitch marker here, so I'm going to SM, slip the stitch marker to my right needle, and then we are going to knit to the last stitch, at which point we are going to purl. There we go. So these two rows make up stockinette stitch. We'll repeat these two rows, purling one row and knitting the next for a total of nine rows. So you can tell how many rows you've done by looking at the little Vs. So I can see a little V here, right? I have another V that's stacked on top. So I know that I've done one row, two rows, two rows in total. And if I turn my work over and purl another row of stockinette stitch, you'll see on the right side of the fabric, another V that will be stacked on top. And that will signify a third row. So that's one easy way that you can count up how many rows you've done as you are knitting. You can just look to your knitting to tell you how many rows you've done. So now turn your work over and work stockinette stitch row one again. So now I've knit nine rows of stockinette stitch and I can tell because I can count up these little V shapes. So here, starting from the garter stitch row, I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I know that I've knit nine rows and I'm ready to work a right side row. Now we are finally ready for the main attraction, which is the bobbles. So our bobble row one goes like this. As usual, we are going to slip one knit wise and we will knit to the marker. Here's our marker, we'll slip it over to the right needle and now we are going to knit four. So one, two, three, and four. There we go, we've knit four stitches. All right, now is our asterisk and make bobble. So we're going to first knit into this next stitch, pull out a stitch, but we're not gonna drop this stitch off the needle, okay? This stitch is gonna take a beating by the time we're done with this bobble. So we've knit into the first stitch, and now we're going to turn our needle over and knit into that same stitch, this one right here, but we're gonna knit into the back of it. So here, we've knit into the front of it, and I'll turn my needle and knit into the back of that stitch, pull out a second stitch. So right now we have two stitches on our needle that we've created, and we're gonna do it all over again. We're going to knit into this same stitch in the front, Okay, so we'll knit into it, pull out a third stitch, and we're going to knit into the back of that same stitch again. So I'm gonna kind of turn my needle, knit into the back of that stitch. This is the same stitch. Pull out a fourth stitch. All right, and now we're going to knit into this stitch again, one last time, this poor little stitch. We're gonna just carefully knit into the front of it Okay, wrap our yarn around, pull out a stitch, and now finally this stitch can come off the left needle and we will just pop it right off. There we go. So now you can see that we have five stitches knit into this one stitch, and this is gonna be our bobble. So once you've pulled out five stitches into that one stitch, we're gonna turn the needle over, and then we're gonna purl those five stitches. So here we go, I'm gonna take my right needle, go into that stitch, and bring my yarn up front, purl into it, 
drop it off the needle. And I'm gonna bring my yarn to the back and just tighten up that stitch because I want my bobble to be nice and tight. I'll bring my yarn to the front again and continue knitting. Here's the second stitch. And be real careful around here, things are slippery. Here's my third stitch that I've purled into. Here's my fourth stitch, purl into it. And my fifth stitch will purl into that. All right, and now I'll bring our yarn to the back again to tighten it up. Now I'm going to turn my needle back to the front and bring my yarn to the back. And now we still have these five stitches, right, on our needle, and that is too many. So we're going to turn this into a bobble. I'm gonna take my right needle and slip into this first stitch as if to knit and then slip it off. I'll do it again to the second stitch. Slip into it as if to knit, slip it off. And now I'm going to knit this third stitch. Knit into it. And now I am going to slip these two stitches over this third stitch. So I'm gonna go in with my left needle, slip into those two stitches, drag it over this third stitch. So here we go, dragged it over, cool. And now I'm going to slip this fourth stitch, slip it over as if to knit, and then I'll knit this last fifth stitch, give it a little tug, and I'm going to slip these two stitches over the fifth stitch. So here we're, we'll do it again. I'll put my left needle underneath these two stitches and drag it over this guy right here. So here we are, draggy, draggy, boom, there we go. And now we have one stitch left and this funny little bobbly looking thing on our needle. And that is how you create a bobble. We knit five stitches out of one stitch and then we purl one row and then we turn over again and we decrease those five stitches back to one stitch. So we haven't actually increased any stitches. That's how you make a bobble. Okay, so our instructions say to knit 11. So after we've made the bobble, I'm gonna just tighten it up and I'm going to knit 11 stitches. So one, 10 and 11. Great, so I've knit 11 stitches. I can always count it up. Here's my bobble, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, perfect. So now we are back to the asterisk, which is make a bobble. So let's do this all over again. We're gonna make another bobble. So here, I'm going to knit into this stitch, knit into the front, kind of turn my needle, and then knit into the same stitch into the back, pull out a stitch, turn my needle again, and knit into the front of that same stitch, pull out a stitch, turn my needle a little bit, and knit, oops, turn my needle and knit into the back of that same stitch. It might get a little tight. Pull out a stitch. Now I've got four stitches, and we're gonna knit one last stitch into the front of this stitch. Ooh, it's tight squeeze. And pull out a last fifth stitch. There we go. Cool, now we've got five stitches, knit into one stitch. And I'll turn my needle over, and this is where we purl those five stitches. So we're going to purl one, tighty tighty, bring it up to the front, and knit, or sorry, purl the rest of those stitches. And here's our fifth stitch. Bring our yarn to the back to tighten it, turn our needles over, so we're back onto the right side, and now we are going to reduce these five stitches back to one stitch. So we'll slip one as if to knit, slip the second one as if to knit, and then we'll knit the third stitch, okay? Then we're going to slip these two stitches over the third stitch. I'll bring my left needle into these two stitches, drag it over the third one, give it a little tidy tidy, slip the next stitch as if to knit, knit the last fifth stitch and slip these two stitches, drag it over that fifth stitch and now our bobble has been created. Lovely. Give it a little pull and now we'll knit 11 stitches. So I've knit 11 stitches and now we will make another bobble. Okay, so let's do it one more time. Knit into this stitch, pull out a stitch, knit into the back of that same stitch, 
pull out a second stitch, knit into the front of that same stitch, ooh, pull out a third stitch, knit into the back of the same stitch, and there we are, pull out a fourth stitch, and knit into that same stitch from the front, oh, tight, ooh, can we do it, yeah, yeah, no, yes, yes, there we are, fifth stitch, beautiful, turn our needle over, and we will purl those five stitches. So here we go, careful, careful. Purl one, bring the yarn to the back to pull, bring the yarn up front and purl the rest of those five stitches. Four and five, great. Turn our yarn over to the front again. And now we will slip one as if to knit, slip two as if to knit, knit that third stitch, slip those first two stitches, whoops, two stitches over that third stitch, slip one as if to knit, knit that last fifth stitch, and now we're going to slip our needle into those last two stitches, bring it over the fifth stitch, tighten it up, and here's our bobble, yeah. And then knit 11 stitches. Okay, so this is the repeat. Make a bobble, knit 11 stitches. Knit a bobble, knit 11 stitches. And we will repeat this until we get to five stitches before the marker. So now I've knit to five stitches before the marker and we are going to do our final bobble. Now we have our last bobble made and we will knit to the marker, slip the marker, and then knit to the last stitch, at which point we will purl. Yes, you know the drill now. Last stitch, yarn up front, purl it. Now you can see our blanket really taking shape. Here is our border of garter stitch and our first row of bobbles. Oh my gosh, they're just, they're so cute. I can't get over how adorable these bobbles are. So in my opinion, knitting is all about customization. With this blanket, you can knit any kind of bobble size that you want. So I wanted to show you just some variations of bobbles. So on this row here, you can see that the bobbles are very small. And that's because these are three stitch bobbles as opposed to our regular five stitch bobbles that we've been knitting. These are really tiny. They're just like little nubbins. I think they're very cute and subtle. And up here, we've got our five stitch bobbles. This is what we've been knitting on our baby bobble blanket. And above that is our seven stitch bobble. These guys right here, there's two rows of seven stitch bobbles. And you can see that there is definitely a size progression. And up here, we've got nine stitch bobbles. So these are bobbles that have been made by knitting into one stitch nine times using the same method that we used with our bobbles, but just adding in more stitches. And the last row here, I only did one row because it was so hard to do, but this is an 11 stitch bobble. And I actually don't see a huge difference between 11 stitches and nine stitches. So when I turn the yarn on its side and you can kind of see the bobbles in profile, you can sort of see the size progression a little bit more clearly. So this would be the three stitch bobble, five stitch bobble, seven stitch, nine and 11 stitch. So you can really see that the bigger the bobble gets, the more height it has in its profile. Swatch, play around with your bobble design so that you can knit the bobble blanket of your dreams. Now we are on the back side of the work and we're going to work stockinette stitch. Slip the first stitch as if to knit and then knit, knit, knit. So we're just purling as one does in stockinette stitch. And when you get to the bobble, you'll notice it. And all you do is just push your needle in and purl into it. And you can see that I purled into it. I brought the yarn to the back and I just gave it a tug, just made it tighter, 
brought the yarn back up front and knit into the next stitch. Bring the yarn to the back to just tighten it a little bit. So that's really all that you do when you encounter the bobble on the back side. Just tighten up your yarn to ensure that that bobble is nice and tight. I'm going to show you a little trick to make your bobble look really perfect and snatched, just nice and tight. Normally you would just continue knitting across, right? And that's fine, except that once you reach the bobble, you'll notice there's this big hole here, right? So if I just continue knitting, there will be a hole. It will be somewhat hidden at the back, but you'll still be able to see it a little bit and it'll make the fabric on the front not look so nice. Instead, what we're gonna do is just grab this strand of yarn and I'm just going to place it onto my left needle, okay? Almost like you're doing an M1R, if you know what that is. So I've placed that strand of yarn on my needle and now I'm just going to knit into the next stitch, which is here. I'm gonna help myself by using my finger and I'm also going to knit it together with that strand of yarn that I just lifted. So there we go, I'm going to knit into it and bam. Now the hole is much less noticeable. Okay, so let's try that again. We'll just continue knitting, stockinette stitch, knit, 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 knit. Once we get to the bobble, we see this big hole, yucky, yucky, don't like it. So we're going to grab that strand of yarn. I'm lifting it from the front to the back like this and just dropping it onto the left needle. And then I'm going to knit that strand of yarn together with this stitch. This is the stitch that's holding our bobble. Okay, so I'm going to insert my right needle into that stitch and I'm gonna use my finger to just help me bring that strand of yarn onto my right needle. Then I'll knit both of those together, tighten it up, and it looks absolutely lovely. Let's do that one more time. I'm gonna to knit to the next bobble. And this is optional, like, you know, your blanket isn't gonna fall apart if you don't do this step. I just think it makes your bobble look neater, more lovely, more professionnel. And now we've reached the bobble and the hole. So I'm going to grab this strand of yarn with my right needle and just plop it onto the left needle and we'll knit these this stitch together with the strand of yarn, thereby tightening up this hole. So let's insert our needle into that stitch, grab that strand of yarn, place it onto our needle and knit those two together, tighten it up and now that hole is much smaller and then continue knitting. So this little trick is only necessary on the right side row after you've knit your bobble. So after you've done your bobble, you turn over, purl, turn over again, knit. So this knit row, after you've done the purl, this is the only time where you lift the yarn and close up the hole. For subsequent stockinette stitch rows, you will not need to do this. So continue on knitting nine rows of stockinette stitch in total. And after you've done that, then we will move on to the bobble row two. Okay, so I've knit up nine rows of stockinette stitch after knitting my bobble row one. And I know because I can count up my rows just by counting up the little V shapes above the bobble. So let's do this together. You can see here that above the bobble, there is a V, and then there's also like a little mini V within that large one. So I'm only gonna count up that little mini V. The reason why we have this situation is because we knit up that strand of yarn with our stitch in order to close up that gap behind the bobble, right? So I'm just gonna count up that mini V. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the ninth row is on our needle right here. It's the loop that's on our needle. So I have worked nine rows of stockinette stitch, and now we are back on the right side, and now we're ready to work bobble row two. So bobble row two is very similar to bobble row one. The only difference is that we start knitting our bobble a little bit later. Instead of knitting four stitches in, we'll knit 10 stitches in so that our bobble is right here and right in between the two bobbles from our bobble row one. All right, so let's get started. We're going to do our very familiar slip one knit wise. And then we're going to knit to the marker then we will slip the marker over SM 
And now we're going to knit 10. Great. Now we're going to make our bobble. So we're going to knit into that first stitch, drag out a stitch, knit into the back of that same stitch, drag out a second stitch, knit into the front of the stitch, drag out a third stitch, knit into the back of that same stitch, drag out a stitch, and knit into the front of the same stitch. This is our last one. <clears throat> and drag out a fifth stitch. There we go. And then drop it off the needle. We'll turn our work over and purl those five stitches, tightening up that first purl stitch. And once we've done those five stitches, we'll turn our needle over again and start slipping those stitches. So slip one knitwise, slips two knitwise, knit one, and we'll slip those two stitches, whoops, slip those two stitches over that third one, slip one again, knit the last fifth stitch, and then we will slip these two stitches, slip it over, and now we have one stitch left and a bobble. All right, so now we're going to knit 11. So now we've knit 11, we can make our bobble again, okay? So continue making a bobble and knitting 11, until you reach 11 stitches before your marker. So go ahead and knit your bobble row two. So sometimes your bobble may want to kind of slip into the back like this, right? It's a little shy. So all you need to do is just push it back to the front. And then your next stitch that you knit, you kind of push it up, make sure that it's up front, knit into the next stitch and kind of secure the placement of the bobble so that it's nice up front, right in front of the crowds and not hiding in the wings. Sometimes if you're not able to knit into that stitch to make your bobble, you can just pull all your stitches off and then start again, right? Start from that one basic bare naked stitch, okay? And start again. All right, so now we've reached 11 stitches before the marker. Now we are going to knit our last bobble All right, so we've knit our last bobble, and now we are going to knit to the marker. So knit here, slip the marker, and here's the last stitch. So we're gonna bring our yarn up front and purl it. So now we have just completed bobble row two. So now we have completed bobble row one and bobble row two, and the nine stitches of stockinette in between. And this is basically the foundation of our baby bobble blanket. After row two, we'll knit nine rows of stockinette stitch, and then we'll go right back to bobble row one, nine rows of stockinette stitch, bobble row two. Okay, and we'll just repeat this. And that is basically the entire pattern. Now I'm going to work my nine rows of stockinette stitch, and you shall do the same. So buckle up, settle in, fire up your favorite show or podcast, and start knitting the bobble repeat. All right, guys, look at all this blanket I have knit. It's just this huge expanse of blanket. It is just incredible. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. It's awesome. <laughs> okay, I know that I have knit nine repeats. Here's how you could figure out how many repeats you've knit. Count by rows of two. So this would be our bobble repeat one, this would be our bobble repeat two, and then we have our uh, stockinette stitch top on the top and the bottom and in between. So this would be one repeat, these two rows, this would be two repeats, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I've done nine repeats of the bobble repeat. And now if we take a look at our instructions, it says that we're gonna work 
bobble row one, and that will be our last bobble row. After working bobble row one, we'll do 10 rows of stockinette stitch, ending on the wrong side of the work. Then we'll do 16 rows of garter stitch, slipping the first stitch knitwise, and purling the last stitch, as we did when we knit the garter stitch border at the beginning. I'm speeding through this part because we kind of already know how to do this, right? We know stockinette stitch and we know garter stitch. Okay, so I've worked 10 rows of stockinette stitch, and now I'm ready to finish up my blanket by knitting up that garter stitch border. I've knit 16 rows of garter stitch, and that completes our garter stitch edge. Okay, so I'm going to turn my needle over, and we are going to work the cast off together. So there's nothing too special about this cast off. We're just going to cast off as normal. I'll slip the first stitch and knit the second stitch. And then I'll bring that first stitch over the second stitch, just dragging it over. And I'm casting off with kind of a loose hand. So I'm not like gripping my yarn. I'm being extra loosey goosey so that my cast off edge will be nice and stretchy. When you get to these stitch markers, just take them off. We don't need them no more and just continue casting off the entire row. Here's my last stitch. I'll knit that up. No need to purl. Now I have one stitch left on my needle. I'll get out my scissors and leave a nice length of yarn and I'll bring the strand of yarn into the last stitch to secure it. And boom, now our blanket is off the needles. How exciting. If you look closely, you'll see that the cast off we just did gave us this nice garter ridge and it really adds to the border. It's so cute. Our blanket is almost complete. So now we need to just weave in the ends like here and on the back of the blanket, if you've been joining your balls of yarn, you will have some little strands of yarn like here and here and here. So let's weave in this strand of yarn. I'm gonna get out my tapestry needle and just thread it up with this little strand here. And I'm just gonna follow the little bumps, okay? So I'm gonna go down one bump here and maybe up a bump here and down another bump here. And I've woven into three little bumps and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm gonna take out my pair of scissors, just give that a little snip get rid of this strand of yarn and we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. So weaving in ends is just a way to secure these little yarn threads so that they don't unravel and we also want them to look fairly neat and hidden. And just snip it right off. Great, so let's take a look at this on the right side. And that should be right here. And you can see that it looks pretty good, right? It's not very obvious. Where we've woven in those strands of yarn, they are quite invisible. Okay, so let's go back to the wrong side and continue doing it to all of these yarn strands. Now we're ready to move on to the last step, which is blocking this blanket so that it is super smooth perfectly even. Grab a bowl or a bucket that you can put this blanket into. Here I've got some room temperature water and my blanket over here. So I'm going to dunk the blanket into the water and just push it down to make sure it's fully submerged. I'm going to let it sit for about 15 minutes to fully soak in. Now I've pushed the water out from the blanket and I've laid it out to dry on some towels and a yoga mat. I'm pinning down the corners and the sides to make them look really straight and neat. When the blanket dries, it'll be in the shape that I pinned it in. That's the magic of blocking. The irony, of course, is that as soon as you use a blanket, it gets wrinkled all over again. But for gifting, I would still block the blanket so it looks super neat and smooth. I hope that the baby in your life loves cuddling in this baby bobble blanket. Two, three. <laughs> Here you are. Thanks for watching. I'm Davina from SheepAndStitch.com. Subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!